City. There we go. Let's go to Alamo City. Hey, Billy. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. As always. Uh, before I get started on another demo, I, I, I thought I'd take my phone. Your mic is low. Can't hear me. Not well. I've got it up as far as I can get it. Man, I know how this feels. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if it's my internet or what's going on, but can you hear me? Yeah, you, you're yeah, just, low. Going, we just everybody needs to everybody needs to pay attention and don't talk or, or overwrite anything Billy is doing, please. Okay, a little piece of ash, and just a little natural edge bowl. And, Got some light spalting in it. Uh, it didn't have any bark, so I burnt it. I also burnt and then sanded back the outside. But, and I used my new laser to do my logo in the bottom. Anyway, that's my show and tell. Now we'll get on with why we're really here. This is just a little piece of oak. It's uh, kind of funny in shape, but I've got an idea for this, for a pendant. So let's get to that. Uh, Sue, I'm sorry, but my lathe doesn't start at zero. It starts at 50. The first thing I'm going to do is a rough shape. Okay, I'm getting that down the way I want it. So now, I'm going to smooth it up a little bit. Because I've got a ridge right here that I don't want. I'm going to do a quick sand on this with some 120. Just to smooth it up a little. I have my dust collector on.
almost got the cart before the horse. Oh. Okay, this this is in zero orientation. What I call my uh, zero zero starting point. It's centered in the jaw at my number one registration mark, and I've got this set at number one as well. And I set this so that it was parallel to the chuck itself. So my first, <clears throat> the first designs I'm going to cut into this will be centered on this little piece. I have an idea for this pendant. We'll see if it turns out. And I have discovered with this that sometimes less is more. So we're not going to put a whole lot of the cuts in. I'm using a quarter inch crown detail gouge. And I freshly sharpened, so I should be getting very nice effects. And they are. So now that that's done, the fun begins. What do you mean, Billy? If I use the right wrench. So we're going to loosen this. I'm going to keep this in. Number one, no, I'm not. I forgot what I was doing for a second. I'm going to move this down to number three, I think. And I'm going to turn this so that it's now perpendicular. I'm going to line my point up with the slot so that I know it's perpendicular. Okay, I'm going to use the top instead. That puts me about right there. Tighten this back up. <clears throat> and you see it's really clunky. My center point is right there. which happens to be about so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come off center, I'm gonna come out here and cut another one. One more out here. Because as a pendant, it's going to be uh, in my vision. This will be where I hang it, and I will do some shaping around here. And sand this up. Everybody follow? We're, we're working on it. Yep. Okay. So this will be the pendant. I'll drill my hole in here. I'll do some shaping 
uh, to ease these corners a little bit. And I'll get that all sanded up after the fact. I don't really want to take up a whole lot of time doing the working on sanding with this because I've got a few things I want to try. But what I will do I'm going to want to park this off about right here. Lateral pressure. These things do not like lateral pressure. So I've got I've got a mark where I can put this on my bandsaw and cut this off. And I will have to sand this up by hand, but you get the idea of what I'm going for here. Right? Kinda. Unfortunately, your internet is freezing up, so so the video is real choppy, Billy. You know, I don't understand that because I'm hardwired in. Blame the electromagnetic magnetic storm this week. It screwed up a lot of my internet too. I was going to say they're having a major solar storm this week. That's why the aurora borealis is showing in 30 states, which it really messes up the internet. Yeah, just keep well, plugging away, Billy. I am, uh, I, I will. Okay, I'm running, I'm connected through my, I'm connected through my hard line and my Wi-Fi. So hopefully that'll help. It may not. Your voice has gotten louder. Good. You know, it works fine when I'm recording. I just, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm supposed to have good internet out here. It never fails, you know. Yep. Okay, this is not a level piece of uh, acrylic. This was this is epoxy resin. So, so first thing I need to do is turn it flat. And anybody that's turned much resin knows that resin likes break so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to use a scraper and just get this flat I could have done this ahead of time. Huh? No, it's, it's a good learning experience for other folks. Uh, for those of you that are thinking about turning resin, if you haven't before, uh, it, from based on my experience, it really likes scraper and it yeah. likes slightly dull tools. If you try to start cutting resin with a tool right off of the right off of the grinder, 
it's going to want to grab more and 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 you'll it'll, you'll get a chirpy or a chippy sound. The sound you want sounds like you're rubbing gently a piece of sandpaper across the wood. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I find now, when go ahead. when you when you do a fresh scraper off the grinder, you then go on top and take that burr off. It, it really helps. Right. Billy, is that sharpened as a negative break? It is. This is a it's a one and. One and a quarter inch uh, fat Benjamin's best round nose scraper that I re ground for negative break. Now, <coughs> that is roughly shaped. Except for the edge. As long as you're getting ribbons, you know you're cutting it right. If it starts flinging chips at you, you know you're not. Well, Seriously? My double stick tape ain't sticking too good. And I had that pressed on there well. Only on a demo. Yep. Billy, you need the whole end of that thing covered with double stick tape. I used two uh two pieces. Uh you may be right there, Jim. But lesson learned, right? All right. What I'm going to do, I know it's not centered anymore. It's as close as I could get it by eye, which isn't close enough. But it doesn't matter because we're doing eccentric stuff and this will all be sanded up off camera and taken care of there. Now, this is a freshly sharpened gouge. So yeah, it's pretty close. So I'm going to put, you, you hear that? Yep. You hear the Chirpy sound. Yeah, that chirpy sound, it was a, initially not cutting well, but now it is. So I'll put another one here. Yeah, let's see, there it goes again. It does not like really sharp tools. It don't, it don't. So now, I'll do similar to what we did before, except I'm only going to move it down one, and I'm going to turn it six. And I'll put one here. And one here. And 
Now you see you've got kind of a, ooh, that's, is that one of the stars? Nope, that was another one. Now I will go, I'll keep it in the same orientation this way, but I'll take it back to center and you'll see it's still off. So it's still off. And I'll make two more cuts. I think here. And I will try to put that back in the original spot and clean this up. Wish me luck. <laughs> right. This might have to make a larger groove. Yeah, maybe. We shall see. Okay, so back in number one. Now, I have this. Always on jaw number one, regardless. Uh, so I don't know that it would make a difference if I set it up for jaw three or not, but I don't want to take that chance. Yep. Hey, that's pretty good. That's the one I need to clean up, I think. Yep. All right. And I will, okay. and what I will do is I will, I will wet sand off camera. I will wet sand this. I wet sand all of my resins. The only way to do it. Groove got a little bigger than I wanted, but that's all right too. And all the chip out is gone. And the rest of that will sand up nicely. But you can see that ah, there's a blown out piece right there. But you can see the, the number of different cuts. And if this was once this is shaped into a pendant style, it, it will have a really interesting look. Kind of looks like a flower. Yeah, kind of. Is that my center hook cut right there? Yeah, I can clean that up. They can clean that up well. Not like that, you can't. <laughs> Not like that, you can't, fat boy. One more. There you go. One more pass. Yeah. Famous last words. Yeah. Oh, you got this. Just like yeah, don't say that. Yeah, don't say that one more cut. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Reflect back to my last demo, you know, it's treat every cut as the last pass and then you won't be fearful of it. Okay, there we go. I think I'm going to live with Billy, that. we have some questions about what do you mean wet sand? I know, but why don't you explain oh, what you mean okay. wet sand? Oh, wow. Wow. That oops. Okay, for wet sanding, I use... Well, I will first, I will dry sand like I normally do. 
up to about 320. And then I have a bucket. all of my micro mesh in. And what I will do is let me change camera. Okay. What I'll do is I have this little tub and I, I keep my micro mesh in it. So I'll take all of that out and I will fill this with water. I, I'll fill it. I'll put about that much water in it. And then I throw my 400. And I throw my 400 and all of my micro mesh pads in it. And they get nice and wet. And I will put some protection down on top of the lathe bed so that it doesn't get wet. I've got a piece of plastic that I can do the lathe with. And once I do that, then I will go through these grids, 400, all the way up to, I think it's 12,000 in the micro mesh. And I go through all of these grids one at a time. I spend more time at 400 than I do anywhere else. And I'll spend about half that time, um, the next micro mesh grip, which is 1500. Yeah. And, and so on. And then I go, and then I don't spend very much time at all on the last, it's just enough to get a nice slurry, and you'll always get a slurry. That's why you know micro mesh is definitely a lot of people say, with that grit, with grit that fine, you're not going to get anything else that. All you're doing is furnishing. I beg to differ because you don't get a slurry from a burnish. As long as the sandpaper is cutting, you know what it's doing. And you can see that because it'll create a slurry on that micro mesh pad. So that's what I mean by wet sand. I use water. Uh, I, know a, I know a number of wood turners that actually wet sand their wood, believe it or not. I'm, uh, I haven't. I, I've wet sanded my finish, and I had a friend of mine who who, who uh, his was in his shower for a long time. And his wife said, "What are you doing in the shower so long?" It turns out he was in the shower with a piece of wood wet sanding it. <laughs> yeah, I felt, yeah, if I was his wife, I'd be concerned as well. Yeah, I would too. Right. I would too. I'm going to. Now, Billy, is that center piece that you just had out, is that cut at an angle? Uh, I, I'm not quite certain what that center piece does. Okay, this center piece here? This That's the tenon that, that holds it. Right. This is the tenon. This part here is the tenon that fits inside here. And this clamps down on it so that it doesn't twist. So when you tighten the chuck up, because you've only got two jaws on here, it actually tightens this down like it was a solid chuck. And it tightens it onto this tenon. I've got these cut so that they don't quite protrude the, the full distance of, uh, of this piece of three quarter inch oak. But they could because there's enough, there's a little room in the bottom of, of the chuck. But I, I've made several of these up, and I just uh, I made several of them up because I wanted to be able to to do more than one thing, especially for tonight. Um, what I'm doing right now is I am putting a couple more pieces of tape of tape on that one that. Came off uh, the first one that came off because I've got something special I want to do if it will hold, and I will I will start turning this one while I'm letting this other one. This tape 
set by pressure. And so I'm going to put some pressure on it on my other leg. Act like it's tape off. You know, it's always something. You got always something. Billy, also, it helps to sand and even put a coat of finish on the back because it gives you a good, a good surface to grab onto. I, I haven't thought about that, but I didn't stand it. And I will. Have we lost this? I've got that setting up. I, I'm going to do something else. I'm not going to use this one right now. I may not use this one at all. I wanted to try something. Last week, uh, Jim said that the angle I had on this one, <laughs> it's an eccentric angle for sure. Uh, he said it might be a little too eccentric. Well, it might be. But we're going to try it. So instead of, instead of this, instead of the chuck body that's in here, like this one, is, is flat. I made sure it was flat on the lathe. So all of these are flat except this one. This one is at, oh, at maybe 10, 15 degrees. I didn't check it exactly. But what that's going to give you, and this is thickness, it is flat, so I'm not worried about that. But what that will give you in, in an exaggerated form is this. And the wood I'm using is just scrap pieces of, uh, this is ash juniper for now. One of those was oak. But see how you don't get a complete circle? Yeah, yeah. Because cause it's angled. So now, let's do the same thing we did before. Let's move it down a notch. If you got the chuck loose enough, you can do that. Come on, turn loose. Behave. And I'm keeping this at the zero mark on here. So um, I'm not at zero, zero anymore. I'm at one zero. And you see that makes a little bit of difference. Yeah, boy. So let's try this. I fell into the same groove. That may be funny. Yeah, I overcut it. And if you practice with this and play with this some, you can figure out where to set it so that you get offsetting. And I didn't, I didn't make, I'll show you what I mean. I didn't make enough marks on this. So I'm going to have to eyeball. I have now flipped this 180 degrees. That should be really close to 180 right there. 
using pencil marks helps show that. Well, I have right. marks on on the backs of my I have marks on the backs of my chucks, but I didn't go all the way around. And I did this using the the index uh, the indexing capability of my 2014. Uh, it comes out to 15 degrees. Yeah, no, no, I meant where the tool's going to cut. You just put a pencil up there, and you can see where the tool's going to cut. Oh, yes. <clears throat> so this should give me just exactly opposite of the ones that I just cut. Mm -hmm. Or really close, and it did. You can see that you've got this double design coming in here. Right, it's overlapping. Right. That's kind of like a neat a, look. Yeah, it is. It's like a like a book match, except it's the image is flipped. That's real cool. Right, and, and yep. one of the things I see with with this is uh, with with a little bit bigger back to one with a little bit bigger diameter uh, piece up here I can easily see where I could take uh, a, a, a five or six inch bowl and to do the brown paper back blue thing and glue and my bow blank to that and, and move this and get a, a bowl that looks thicker on one side than the other. Right. Yeah, I see that. Oh my goodness, what do we have? I have put this on my laser. My daughter told me, she said, Dad, she said, and I didn't center this on my marks, so I'm going to have to go by eye. But my daughter told me, she said, Dad, uh, if you, if you want to turn things that girls are going to like, she said, more women wear earrings than they do pendants. So, that being the case, I, uh, I, I burnt this design in this piece of wood today because I want to try making some cuts in here. Now, the, the tricky part, if doing it while it's on center is easy. The tricky part is going to be when I move it off center, making them so that they look the same. So that when I cut these out on my scroll saw, mm -hmm. mm. I have a set of earrings that are book matched. So I've not tried this before. This is completely experimental. I may be uh, <laughs> yeah. let's just say relieving myself into the wind. Yeah. You are fearless. Who me? Yeah, you. <laughs> I I don't mind experimentation. I really yeah, don't. Let's call it adventurous. Yeah, uh, so far that's not bad. Nope. That's not bad. So I got it pretty close. So we'll do the same thing we did a minute ago. I'll move this one notch. And I want to keep it centered. I 
Ah. And need to not be such a precious. Okay. Hmm. Yep, if I had my two wrist high enough, wouldn't it? So I want to make this one here. And make this one here. Now I'm going to try to not move my tool wrist, and there's a reason. Because where I did those last ones, I want to make that cut there. And this cut here. I want to get this turned around. Does that make sense? Yep. That way I know I'm cutting in the exact same spot. Hmm. Except 180 out. Did I lose anybody? <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> We're going to have this replay. Okay. Exact same spot. So my cut goes here. And my cut goes here. Cool. See how they, that's not a bad match. It's not perfect, but it's really close. See how that you've got the two different intersections here. The just kisses the outside here, comes in. That's pretty close. It's, it's not a perfect book match, but close enough for a right ear and a left ear, right? I think so. Nobody will, I mean, you, you won't be yeah. able to notice. And so with these burn lines in here, I'll be able to take this to my scroll saw and scroll these out and then sand them up. I'm going to shape them a little bit smaller because I think these are a little big, but I will, I will work all of that out and then do all of my sanding and drilling my hole, and all that stuff. But I think that's going to work. Cool. I love what you're doing with this jig. Now, that's a fantastic jig. It is a great jig. Duxbury created a monster with it. Yeah, yes. Now, yeah, but it's, very he's, benign, he, it's a very benign and glorious monster. <laughs> yeah, he's a genius. I just love it. Right. <laughs> now, oh, I know, now, right. Let's, now let's get crazy. Now I'm at two zero. I didn't make any cuts at, at zero zero. Too high. Okay. So I'm at 
that here. And I'll make it set here. Mm -hmm. Two and a half inch. I have three inch. And we'll go to four. Actually, it's spelled at one, one, one. Well, I was at three, one. So, so this is not adding up. So, go two more. Because I went two knots the first time. And two more this time. That's really going to throw it out there. See what I mean? This is not. And my, my center point is right there. So I'm going to come in here. This thing is really propeller right now at this point. I can feel the wind off of it. So I didn't turn, I didn't turn the other chuck, the inside part, I didn't turn it at all. All I did was move the chuck down and, and you get the, these nice concentric rings all the way down. Uh, in fact, I think I need one more. And I need to make this one a little bit. Oh, that's cool. And that was just that was just moving it down. There was no twist in here at all. And I don't really think I want to twist it. So uh, my hat my hat is off. The gym does great for this ingenious device because it is an ingenious device. There's no question about it. And, and there, all of the all of the rest of the stuff. Go away. Billy, if you'd have stayed on that same center, your first center, your second yeah. center, if you'd have stayed on that second center and indexed the whole piece 180 degrees, you'd have turned the same two rings on the other side that would have matched those two. Uh, yes. Right. So you'd have this way and that way. So they yeah, like uh, overlapping. Right. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. I got you. Nobody likes a flat road. You can make these into brochures too, by the way, not just things. Give it a little slope. Yeah, cut away some of the lines, but look. See how much cleaner it is now? And that's, that is a cool look. Sure is. Yeah. And if you, cool you you can spray it black, you spray it black now and then sand that and yeah, you'll leave, you'll highlight them. So it's it, it's basically this jig is it, it is so versatile. Uh, just think, I mean Anything that you can, anything you can imagine, or anything you can come up with, try it. I mean, that's all I'm going to say. Is you just got to try it. It's your imagination is your only limitation. It it takes 
it takes turning to a, a whole different Because, I mean, well, come on, earrings like this, once you sand them down, they will look right. as cool as what I just did, putting a little bit of a dome on that, you can put a dome on these when you're sanding them up, and so there's just, there's an endless number of possibilities that, that literally endless number of possibilities you can come up with on this thing because you've got a good well each of those each of my marks on that on that rectangular piece of the quarter inch part. So I've got an inch and a half of play there. So I can move that in a quarter inch inch up, up to an inch and a half and completely change the dynamic of whatever it is I've got on the curve. It, whether it's where there, like I said, it's a small bowl with a one inch rim on one side and an eighth inch on the other, or pendants, or brooches, or earrings, or wall hangers. A wall hanger, you can piece together any number of possibilities there. So, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, I didn't want to take uh, too much time. I, I wanted to show you some of the things that you can accomplish with this jig because it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, it just is. Billy, great job. Way to be adventurous. Thank you very much, Billy. That was great. Yes, I loved it. Super. Yeah. I appreciate the opportunity as always. It's very I, insightful. Very I, I hope, insightful. I, I hope my internet and my audio got better. No. No. <laughs> no but, but Billy, but so, you, Billy, so you are so fine, gonna, Billy. Come we on. Got now. We we got the idea though. That's great. Billy, are you going to uh, you're gonna finish them up and, and show us the final results next week? <laughs> Uh, yes. Right on, right on. No, 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 no I'm, I can't, Dane. Um, maybe in two weeks. We okay, are, in a couple we're, weeks. We're leaving. Hey, Billy. Yeah, maybe in two weeks. We're going on a cruise. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, because yeah. there's a lot, there's a lot of action, you know, with folks wanting to see the, the end results, so especially yeah, the earring. Yeah. Hey, 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 Billy. Yes. Could you, uh, I, I mean, it's just for an idea, instead of doing the cutting, just use a marker, some kind of a marker for each cut, and then go back, and that way you don't, so all you'd have to do is sand off that little piece of paper, or the piece of block of wood. Yes, and, and I did that when I experimented the first time. I, yeah, I, used, I understand. I, I, I used a pencil, and I... I and I, I played around with it to see. Yeah, that way. That way, all you got to do is uh, all you got to do is sand it off a little bit, and you can you can start all over. You don't have to remove everything. Exactly. And if you're using a pencil, you don't even have to sand it. Uh, denatured alcohol will actually take it off. All right. Thanks for answering me. No problem. Yeah. Hey Billy, can you can you hold up the resin piece again? It, I, I got a little bit hard with it. It, it chipped out in some places. See there? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. See that chip out? That, yep. I, I call that a fail. <laughs> because there's no amount of sanding that's going to get that out. I, I'm, what I might have to do is uh, put it back in the chuck. Yeah, and re -carve it. Yep. And, and re -carve it, turn on it a little bit more. Or you, you could probably, you could probably do it by hand with the Dremel. I, I could, but it's it's thick enough that I've got some room to play. Okay, you got enough meat there. Yeah, right yeah, on. I think I've got enough meat to play with, so I can I can put it back on the way. Well, hey, very good. Hey, and and then another thing too is, uh, Dave, can you clip out the section where Billy was talking about 
not having a super sharp um, scraper when he was cutting the resin. That's a good clip out video. Absolutely. Oh, and okay. sharp and standard tools yeah. as well. I mean, you're gouging. You don't want them to break. Get, get them a little bit dull on a bowl or something, and then turn it. You're right, but you know, but the main thing is, is after you sharpen it, you need to go on top of the on top of the scraper and take that burr off, and that'll that'll take away ninety percent of that catchiness on it. Right. So great job, Billy. Very insightful. You had a lot of a lot of tips and good technique and making shavings and making making some beautiful pieces. <laughs> Thanks. That's what? right. What's wonderful, Billy, is that you've showed us all how Jim Duxbury jig works. <laughs> you made and me look us, good. <laughs> and gave us some new ideas, too. Made and me look so, good. <laughs> so now we all want to make the jig. So. That's right. Jim, 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 my help to look good, buddy. And <laughs> thank you, Billy. Yep. Well, yeah. after we're done here with Billy, we're going to go to Mr. Duxbury, and I think he's going to add some more tidbits about the jig. So. Does anybody else have any questions? Speak now, forever hold your peace. All right, everybody say thank you to Billy. Give him a round of applause, please. Thank, thank you, Billy. Thanks, Billy. Thank you, 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 Billy.